Aguiar fan, name all the times Three, he's been on stream two, and tournament, one. and like you could actually do that. <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're an actually Aguiar possible. fan, you could literally do that here. We're coming into Crystal Temple though. You hear the beats going on in your ears. You see those soft platforms on your screen, and Stingray coming into this with the Ember. That's what we've seen him play so far today. Well, yeah, he was on the Zol earlier, yeah. but this Ember was specifically a counter to Sandstorm on the Magyar. It's the thing that knocks Sandstorm into the lower bracket, and depending on how things go, might be the thing that takes Sandstorm out of this one and gives Stingray that gold medal. But Sandstorm with that weapon, able to have that range advantage over the Katars from Stingray. Now you mentioned that set earlier, and Stingray playing on this Ember was what forced Sandstorm to move off of the Magyar nice. onto the more decks. And Ooh, the Gravity Cancel up. Sidelight. Really good plays from Sandstorm to get the first stock. Gonna have his choice of weapons here going back to the great sword. Stingray is able to swipe that one out of the air as it's spawning in, using those soft platforms to keep himself high and safe away from Sandstorm. Nice neutral light. Ooh, see him going for more of them. That sort of jump fastball neutral light. Jump fastball neutral light. He might have even been going for another one, but now he's taking punishment. GC and Sigans, another stock taken by Sandstorm. He's looking so incredibly good here in the grand final. Whoever designed that signature and then animated that signature, yo, they rule. That signature is so rad. Oh, it's so cool. Absolutely adore that signature. Just a cool concept and, of course, great effects on it. Oh Another three-piece coming out from Sandstorm. Gra oh, <laughs> my gosh. Oh, three stocks oh to start it off in the grand final. One, Sandstorm one. is on fire. 85 damage put out by Stingray. Oh, oh no. That is a two-digit Stingray here. That is so rough in game one. <laughs> Even dancing on that one. Yeah, that was definitely a celebratory down heavy if I've ever seen one. Sandstorm popping off in the matchup for game number one. Sandstorm hit like more attacks Three, than Stingray two. threw out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. I don't want to laugh at that because like, that hurts. Stingray is, is sick on it. He's so good. He's in Grand Finals yeah. in the Mammoth Invitational. Winner's but side. Like, that is what Sandstorm did to him. He made Stingray look like not the caliber of player that we all know Stingray is. Yeah, I mean, he just really, that was such a impressive body. Yeah. He straight up put him in a body bag and tossed him off the edge of Crystal Temple. But here we are in game number two. Stingray going to try to make the adjustment here. Not getting run over the same way at the very least. He's not getting shoved completely to the outside where Sandstorm was able to get that gravity cancel and Zig able to get that gravity cancel sideline. There's that sideline. This time went for the turnaround in light. Oh, he went for that signature a little bit earlier than he's been going for it in the past. He's used it to KO two different opponents now. A couple previous two sets that we've seen. He uses it like really off stage when he's close to that diagonal kill box. Oh, not quite enough. Some good pickups from Stingray with the Katars. Throws out the side zig, but a punish comes out from Sandstorm. Off stage, down light into the side air. First stock to Sandstorm, but Stingray's looking better. Yeah, we're seeing a much different first stock taken this time. A minute 15 into the game, Sandstorm very close to being taken out. You see that D-Light coming out. He's looking for that KO condition, but it's not the D-Light that leads into the neutral light or more favorably the recovery. It's the neutral signature. Nice neutral saying. It's been so effective for the Embers today for finishing off stocks. Oh, yo. Okay. He's entering the bow state. <laughs> he's getting it, and he's really good with his follow ups, right? That side light doesn't get the true follow up into the down light, so he likes to go for that dash forward, dash back, really just trying to catch movement from Sandstorm. Stingray's starting to use his range really well. Not only, of course, does he just have the raw D-Light, the move itself giving him a lot of range, but he's staying back, coming in with a dash side light, and then turning that into more. And it's interesting because usually when you talk about this matchup of bow into greatsword, you're talking about the down light from the bow. That's been the big tool for a lot of bow players to play into this greatsword, but with punish from Sandstorm, able to put Stingray onto the corner, doesn't hit the side light. Oh man, Stingray being really careful with how he gets back to the platform. Gets over to the wall under. Nice neutral signature again from Stingray. 
stripping the field, not giving Sandstorm the option to swap over to that hammer. Side Sig, Stingray's answer back this second game is phenomenal. Look how close he is around Sandstorm when he chooses to be on top of him. His jumping, his fastballing, his movement left and right, he is like around everything that Sandstorm has. It's impressive. Yeah, it's definitely impressive the fact that he uh, wasn't mentally broken after game number one. I think there's a lot of players Ooh. who would have had trouble, but man, he is able to respond so well, able to build out this damage. Man, those resets that Sandstorm was catching like Phazon and other opponents with, he's not really hitting that against Stingray. He'll, he might hit one hit of the first one, then he goes for the reset, and Stingray is just all of a sudden, oh, he's behind him. He's so fast. Ooh, but he caught it. He didn't get the down light. That's supposed to be unjumpable, but Sandstorm not able to connect with the down bridge off of that neutral opener, and Stingray one recovery away from taking game number two. One of the few times we've seen Sandstorm actually have the hammer in his hand so far this set. Stomp side air only in okay. yellow. Second side air hits him in the orange. Goes for a third side air. He was burning a lot chasing there. You saw both of them in sweat beads at the same time. Outspaces the wolf. Denies the weapon. Great sword in Sandstorm's hand. It's going to be hard to finish off this stock with a great sword. Gets oh, no, it's not. Doesn't go for the follow-up. What? what? Sandstorm. Oh, no. Great sword mains out there. And I'm talking about the players that have hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on the weapon. They are all having their head in their hands after that one. He was so slow. He didn't go for the down bridge immediately off the side light. And that is trouble that gave stingray the opener he needed that whiff at the end on the side finisher and that is game number two tying it up one apiece man look at that 620 damage that stingray needed to finish that one out sandstorm oh my goodness that was so close again we're seeing those almost downward trending numbers that it takes for sandstorm to find these stocks this game but what an answer back from stingray yeah i mean again really good composure that it, it's a struggle when you lose game one that hard and it is definitely something commendable to come back in game number two and not only bring two, it back close one, but to four. win it out and to not just like get stoked that Sandstorm made that mistake and couldn't finish that, but to then turn that into actually getting the KO and taking the game rather than just, oh no, I, yeah, that was cool, but then I got hit by a straight side air and I'm done. So he still kept his brain engaged in it and turned it into a W. That's one of the reasons he has a W next to his name on the scoreboard. Yeah, sitting on that winner's bracket, but a nice recovery. Stingray did get the wall touch. Down Sig not gonna connect onto Stingray. Sandstorm not throwing those out too frequently on those edge guards. Now over here on the Demon Island, we are completely getting away from those soft platforms. Still have the tiny wall, but those soft platforms are completely gone. Stingray trying to control the ground as best he can. Also the weapon game, he has taken a lot of unarmed damage and he was already behind. So the weapon advantage not playing too much in his favor so far. Can't find a single hit on Sandstorm. Yo, his movement around the boat just leveling up, but now he's got a great sword. And you're looking for those hits. Doesn't hit the recovery. Doesn't hit the signature. Stingray doesn't hit his own. It's going to be the recovery. Sandstorm take the first stock. And he's in a pretty good spot. Only in the orange. Has control of the weapons. We'll see where the next spawn comes in. Stingray's able to grab this one. Who's favoring the right side while Sandstorm was on the left. A lot of jumping. See the down air coming out. Doesn't quite have the proper positioning to find the neutral air afterwards. There's the recovery. Stingray needs to find a KO here before he takes too much damage. And unfortunately, he's on the Katars, which have oh, not been no. Oh, no! Oh, no! That hasn't even had time to think about how he's going to KO this stock. He's just thinking about how to get out of these strings. Reset attempt, but a nice side six. Stingray able to get the stock, but he took a lot of damage for that. Now, I really like Sandstorm turning that string around and again trying to focus Stingray over to the left side, possibly leading to an edge guard situation. Even without that, he still might have been able to find a KO with a strong finisher on that. Yo, one of the rare again drops from Sandstorm here. A little bit of tournament nerves from Sandstorm here in the grand finals of the Mammoth Invitational. But like you said, he's he's going for interesting directions with his greatsword. Very few greatsword players want to go off stage with it. Greatsword has Stingray in the red, doesn't hit the recovery. Doesn't go for the immediate Nair off the dare connection. 
Ooh, misses that one. There's the immediate punish. He went for the back-to-back -back neutral lights. That's a classic Stingray move, classic guitar player move. We see Stingray going for that a lot. Neutral light one way, turn around, neutral light the other way. Sandstorm going immediately into the three-piece. Wasn't able to connect with the neutral closer there. He's going for the reset. Stingray able to avoid it. Yeah, he was staying high on that, so he wasn't grounded to get hit by the turnaround sidelight. There we see the backup from Sandstorm on that one. Has a huge lead on Stingray now. It's going to be very tough for Stingray to fight his way back into this oh! one. Oh! It's getting knocked out here. Oh, no, another game. Going to Sandstorm, that one was a two-stock. He's so fast at going straight into the three-piece. Like, you just, you never 100% know when he'll do it. He's so good at mixing up. And then there, at the very end, he just goes straight into it, neutral side-side, and gets the stock. And Sandstorm, currently 2-1, one, one away from a reset. He's continuing to have his damage kind of sit around that 550. Sometimes it's a little bit higher here with 535. Sometimes it's a little bit lower at like the 542 range. So very good average damage that he has to deal before he finds the KO. It's not super crazy, but what might be crazy is the character pick coming out from Stingray. This is Stingray saying, I want every counter I can potentially have against this great sword. Lance and Boat, both known to be pretty good against the great sword. And uh, we'll see how well it works out for him. But right now, he's just getting knocked off stage, burned his movement. Sandstorm tries to deny the wall touch, but Stingray gets it and gets back up safely. Now, Stingray, the legend that he kind of made his huge splash, man, I really didn't mean to say that. I'm truly sorry, everyone out there. But the way he really made his way onto the scene was with that Orion in a winter championship. His vector, I'm trying to find what level his vector is. It's low down on there. It is a level 29 vector. So compared to some of the other legends we've seen him play today, going to be pretty low, though we do obviously see the experience he has with Bo. Saw that earlier. And, of course, that Orion that we saw. Yeah, I mean, he definitely has a lot of experience. Oh, oh. <laughs> what? The rare situation where that down bridge actually works out in your favor. There's a lot of force on it, but it can be really slow. So it's very rare to see it mid-string. And Sansa's like, I'll just not do it mid-string. I'll do it on the edge guard and bonk my opponent. You just saw that Bo Insig come out. Uh, we've seen a lot of crazy things today, and we are okay. continuing that with the Vector pick here in Grand Finals. Going to even up the stocks. Stingray not too far behind, but it's still around like 50 damage, which we've seen how quickly Sandstorm does things. Doesn't get the turnaround there. He kind of turned that one around like he was almost a guitar player yeah. on that, hoping for the guitar half fight. Trying to go for that that continued pressure. I mean, he was literally just playing a guitar character, so maybe that's the logic behind that one. But a side air, but Stingray far weapon toss, not going to connect. D light double D. That was pure style and punishment. Sandstorm with a double D light ground pound. He didn't need that second down light. I'll tell you that much. Nobody does double down lights anymore. Yeah, like Sandstorm does them regularly. We've seen so many of them today. Nobody does that anymore except for Sandstorm. That is uniquely sure. him. Hitting the great sword strings though. So good at the resets. There he goes straight in with the three piece. Down here, goes for the weapon toss follow up. Chasing deep. Oh! And it, <laughs> it doesn't even matter. We're getting the reset. Sandstorm wins it 3 1 for the bracket reset. I don't think we're going to see the vector anymore. Sure? We're seeing another what? set, but if it contains no a vector, I would be very surprised. That was utter destruction. Yeah, that was control from Sandstorm. Complete and utter destruction, like you said. Stingray, even there, like Sandstorm didn't have to go for that ground pack. He's going for extra, he's going for style, he's going for content, and he's going for gold as he now has to win one last best of five. It is anybody's best of five, though, because they're both in the loser's bracket now. Can't wait to see that YouTube video from Sandstorm that comes out next. How I accidentally won a tournament with <laughs> Magyar. <laughs> Gone wild? Maybe. All caps, got to throw that in there somewhere. Put a featuring as well of the biggest name that you can think of. But, man, good plays from Sandstorm. And now it's on Stingray to make the thought. What's it going to be? Is he going to go back to the Zolt, which did very well against everyone else? Or is he going back to the Ember, the thing that puts Sandstorm into the loser's bracket? It looks like it's the Ember for game number one in the bracket reset. Clear the scoreboard. It's 0-0.
Now you will see an O, or sorry, not an O. That just changed, and it's that an put L. the number in my head. It's an L next to both players' names. Now Sandstorm already was in the loser's bracket. Now Stingray has technically dipped down into the loser's bracket. That's where you see that 0-0 zero, zero coming from. That's Chuck. where the bracket reset comes from, and the L on the first stock is also going from Stingray, and that is going to come courtesy of Sandstorm's Great Sword. Hardly even touched on this first stock. What an opening. And we're back on Crystal Temple, and I don't even know, man. Like, this was such a rough map for Stingray, game number one. Of course, he's still putting out some decent damage, but just the fact of the matter is, Sandstorm looks so clean on Crystal Temple with this Magyar. I don't think there's anything that is map inherent that is leading to Fair. Sandstorm coming out on top, because we've seen the two soft platforms taken away. Really kind of no difference there. We aren't oh. seeing too much off-stage engagement to where like a longer wall would help out either player. There's really not that much of that going on. We aren't seeing extended edge guards. Stingray hoping to patrol the ground, stay right in between those soft platforms. Hoping he can find this KO. You see the side light coming out. He doesn't chase into the air too much. Nope. Trying oh to play no. this one smart. But again, Sandstorm catches the dodge with the end light, goes for the three piece into the side finisher, goes for the ground pound, not able to connect though, and Stingray has the corner control, nice little end light, but it's not enough. Sandstorm didn't have a follow-up. He picks up the hammer for the Nair. Gonna have his choice of weapon. Here comes the great sword. Weapon actually goes very quickly to Stingray on that right soft platform. He's backing Morning. up. This is not gonna be good. Sandstorm was ready for it. That's his reset route, right? Like he likes to do that dash back and that was the perfect punish on a Stingray, getting so many hits, so much damage. Again, the wake up from Stingray goes for the double one and the triple. You saw the way he was moving for it. Man, those double D lights. Sandstorm is so cheeky on it. Neutral light, that actually caught Stingray just a little bit off the ground in the air. Goes for the downer, it was really high up. Not enough to KO just yet. Even went from the unarmed cider to add insult to injury. That is going to be a KO, but Stingray here in the grand finals reset. Game one of it, and he is red on his final stock. He does deny the three stock at the very least, so his eagle, his ego, excuse me, will be uh, not completely bruised, but the scoop up on wake up and Sandstorm Player takes one. game number one. Now a couple hits also denied the JV3 on that one, but are you really denying that much? Sandstorm is really steamrolling through this one. It's hard to deny the absolute massacre that Sandstorm is putting on right now. He won in the grand finals pre-reset 3-1, and he's looking to just take the reset now with another 3-0, unless Stingray can bring out something, some answer to this great sword of Sandstorm. And he's really finding his way to hit those strings now, kind of more consistently than he was previously. He's catching those sort of bad dodge options that are coming out from Stingray, and he's really exploiting that now. 512 damage is all it took that game to get that. 170 damage average per stock when he was finding KOs. Now, Sparky, this is a character you know and love, so I'm going to have to defer to you. What is the, what is the Vrax bringing in this matchup? I'm going to be real with you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a buck on this because he brought in the Vector and the Lance was a non-issue. Are Blasters really going to be that much of an option here? Like, he's dead. It's 26 seconds and he's dead and Sandstorm is in the yellow. Is there a character on the planet that Stingray could bring in here to shut Sandstorm down? It's got to be so demoralizing for Stingray, who's done so much work to get this spot in the Grand Finals. He knocked Sandstorm into the loser's bracket, and it's Sandstorm just coming up from the depths like one of the Stratsky, one of the members of the Magyar family, and just murdering. Oh. Now, we did see a lot of Sair usage coming out from his blasters, especially those fade back side airs. Trying to put max range, move himself in and out of the effective range of those blasters. Goes for the side signature, goes all the way through Sandstorm. We've got the great dodge on it. Neutral sick coming up, not anywhere near. Side light, side air, the recovery from below, though. Stingray playing from behind, full stock lead for Sandstorm. Side sick thrown out. I like the down light, lots of sigs coming out, but it's Sandstorm who connects with one. I'm not sure because we're huh. seeing so many signatures come out. That down sig, one of the f yo, that was, oh, that was He's fast. He's so fast. That was fast. That down signature, like one of the few times we've actually seen Sandstorm make contact with that. But we saw that charge signature on the lance from Stingray. I wonder if he's trying to go for, it can be a little bit ambiguous for some players which signature Grax is actually using when he's charging it up. 
that may be why we saw those back and forth. The Blasters are going to get the KO there. That's going to deny the three stocks. Stingray not in a terrible position, but the Lance is coming in for him. Sidelight down air. Yeah, the, the, the difference between the side sync and the end sync can be a bit ambiguous if you're not used to this matchup. And let's be real, not that many Vraxes at high competitive play, especially not in grand finals of a Mammoth Invitational like this. But Sandstorm doesn't care. He's getting this damage. One more hit. Doesn't hit the side sync. The chase dodge, oh but the dare. And Sandstorm gosh. takes another one. He is marching towards the finish line. A two stock for him right there, 556 damage. I just cannot stress around that range. He is so consistent with those KO options, finding him right when he can. Even after missing that signature, still finds a way to end that one up. 292 damage was all that Stingray could put out. Had Sandstorm kind of in the orange on his second stock, but still, it almost doesn't matter. We see Sandstorm hit almost twice as many attacks still find the KOs. Stingray's at a complete loss here. Do you just continue shopping around characters or do you pick the Ember? He's going back to the Zolt. It's the final pick for Stingray. It's the Zolt. It's worked against everyone else so far. Is this going to be finally the pick for Stingray to take one on the board and potentially take this to game number four? But it's Sandstorm already in the driver's seat, foot on the pedal. Hoping the cannon uh, can be used a little bit better than Lance, even though he kind of propels himself with it, almost like it is a Lance getting away from that neutral light that came out from Sandstorm. There's a side light, in light. Oh, he got the three piece on it too. Okay, Stingray with the cannon. Not getting completely run over just yet. Throws out the end light immediately, but Sandstorm's outside of it. Stomp, side air, Sandstorm takes the first stock. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yo, that's, that's back to the days of the Egg Soup Shadow yeah. set. <laughs> Only real ones know what we're talking about there. Gets a nice little side light to start that one off, right as those iframes are done on Stingray. Side light, neutral air. Stingray looking for the neutral signature. He found stocks with that previously when he was fighting against Faison. Not going to be the chance, at least so far, against Sandstorm. Weapon toss, and Sandstorm is actually able to grab the greatsword right out from under Stingray and keep it going, continuing, keeping him weapon him starved. Yeah, went in with a down in the neutral, neutral onto Stingray. Wanted to make sure that he couldn't jump out, but Stingray finds a response, gets that neutral air. Sandstorm playing with his food a little bit. Didn't want that weapon pick up. Still have two more stocks on either side. So uh, getting a little premature with the ego. Oh, they knocked out the recovery. He tried to extend it off stage, but Sandstorm was just too high. He was able to get back to the main platform. Goes for the same direction option there. Going for the end light read, but Stingray went to the other side. Again, that 50-50 really strong for the great sword players out there. We're pretty close to being even here. We're now two minutes into this game, oh. and all of a sudden that stock is gone. Weapon spawn comes in, Sandstorm tossing away the hammer. Knows his great sword's looking so good here. That D-Light gravity cancel neutral heavy puts Sandstorm into the red on the second hit. He's just getting this damage built up. Really good recognition on the tail end of that last one to go for the three piece, the unjumpable version where he got that D-Light bridge into the end finisher. But Stingray does find a response. We're going into the final stocks here. Sandstorm one stock away from being crowned the Mammoth Invitational Champion. This is Stingray's final chance to keep himself into this. He's taken so much damage. All of his recoveries back to the platform getting denied. Oh! It's the Russian Mafia from Sandstorm to finish it out. 3-0 in the reset and Sandstorm will be the North American Mammoth Invitational Champion. If a portal opened and it was future, or really current me, going out of the portal and talking to me and Taza, who were on the desk earlier, while we were talking about the Blazy versus Sandstorm <laughs> set that was happening off stream, if future me would have said, no, actually Sandstorm comes back and actually demolishes everyone, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> I would have been like, shut up, future me. You're crazy. I don't care that you have a portal through time. You're still somehow...